Welcome to Dr. Mode's chemistry class. This video is going to be about balancing insanely difficult chemical equations. This equation right here has been the most difficult equation that I've been able to find to balance. It has three reactants and six products and it is a nightmare. The traditional method for balancing chemical equations is the accounting method. This is where you write the equation and you account for all of the elements that are in the reactants. You do the same thing for the products. And then what you try to do is you try to make the numbers the same on both sides. The problem is you can get a lot of numbers the same uh, using the accounting method, but you go back and forth between oxygen and hydrogen, oxygen and hydrogen, and it's a super slow convergence. I'm not even sure if you can actually converge on the answer. While researching how to solve these hard balancing equations, what I found is an algebraic method where all of the coefficients that go in front of the reactants and products, you put a variable there and you write equations. Now these equations involve the different elements. For example, the first element listed is potassium, the K. So here we go. It appears in two of the reactants and just one of the products. So what we can do is we can put together an equation that looks like this, where because there are four potassium atoms in the first reactant, we put a four before the X1. It's only appearing one time in the second reactant and one time in the formula for the only product where potassium appears. So this is just one of the equations we can write and we'll continue to write these for all of the elements. So doing this for all the different elements, I can come up with eight equations. One thing that you might notice though is that there are nine unknowns and this is a problem algebraically but we can reduce the number of unknowns by recognizing some things that are equal to each other. So for example we can see that x7 and x8 are equal to each other and x2 and x6 are equal to each other. Another thing that you might notice is that I did this for each individual element, uh, but when I got to oxygen, I split that up into the oxygens that do not appear in sulfate and then the oxygens that do appear in sulfate. All the sulfurs always appeared with O4. So I could simplify the equation a little bit and, uh, and separate this out. The best way to start trying to solve this system of equations is to set some of the larger equations equal to each other in some fashion. So one thing you'll notice is that the equation for hydrogen involves an X3 and the equation for sulfate involves an X3. So what we can do is we can use this relationship and come up with this new equation right here. The goal is to take this longer equation and get to a point where it's only in terms of two variables. So we need to simplify it. Uh, the first step is to recognize that X4 is on both sides. So we can uh, get that on the same side and reduce the equation to this form as a first step. So now we need to look at the other equations and see what we can plug in to that, that equation on the previous slide. So if we look at these two equations, the equivalency between X7 and X8 and the equation for oxygen, we can see that we can simplify this a little bit by recognizing that those two things are equal to each other. So that simplifies this equation to this. And we know that X2 and X6 are the same. So we can convert the formula in terms of the variable X6, which appears in that bigger equation on the previous slide. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in for X6 in our equation. But what we've done is we've come up with a formula in terms of 4X6, and our, our big equation here only has a 2X6 in it. That's simple uh, to solve. We can just multiply everything by 2. Now we have a 4X6 into it. So we can plug in our smaller equation for X6 and get this right here. 
And now we have x7 and x9 on both sides. So what we can do is we can, we can put those on the same sides and come up with this equation, which is now reduced by one variable. So we can continue to try to simplify our equation. What you might recognize is that the x5 and the x7 at the end of this equation can be rewritten in terms of x1, both of them using the iron equation and the nitrogen equation. So if we plug in for x5 and x7, we get this formula right here, and we can simplify that to this right here. So we've reduced that equation by another variable. So the next thing that we're going to do is try to get rid of that x9 in the previous equation. So what I'm going to do is pull this equation from a previous slide, and this is the, the equation that we derived that was in terms of either x6, which we used already, or we could write it in terms of x2. So we're going to use this version of it. So what we're going to do is we are going to solve for x9 and then multiply everything by 3 because in the equation what we want to plug into um, it's in terms of 3x9 but now it's uh, it's written on the other side with an x2 and an x7 well we can find a version of the formula from uh, the potassium and the nitrogen atom where it's in terms of the variables that we want to put it into so we can swap these out come up with uh, with this when we when we insert those in there and uh, simplify that, combine like terms, and end up with this equation. Okay, now we're getting really close. Now we have two equations that both equal three times x9. So what we can do is now set those two equal to each other and we're only in terms of two variables. We have x4 and x1 on both sides, so we need to get those on the same side. So if we uh, subtract the 2x4 from both sides and add the 138x1 to both sides, we can get this equation. And if we put it in this form right here, this is where we want to be. We want to be in this form. This tells us the coefficients that we want for our first two variables. x4 is 162 and x1 is 10. Okay, now it gets fun because all of the answers are going to start showing up. So I've inserted the two answers that we just discovered into our list and what we can do is we can use the equation for potassium to figure out that x2 is 122 and insert that into our list. We can see that x2 and x6 are equal to each other, so we can insert that uh, the fact that x6 is 122. x1 is equal to three different variables, uh, so what we can do is we can figure out x5, x7, and x8 and insert those into our list. Here we can use the SO4 equation to determine what X3 is, and this is the largest coefficient, it's 299. And then we can use the oxygen equation to figure out that X9 is 188. So we can insert all of those into our list and we have all nine coefficients at this point. So here it is, here's the result. We plug in all the coefficients and we have a balanced chemical equation for this insanely difficult problem. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video and you wanna see some more, please subscribe, like, and share the video. Thank you very much.